I'm still Judy Nichols, and I'm still pleased to um, introduce our program today and our, and our presenter, who's Rocky Rowland, a retired uh, Air Force pilot of 27 years. He's also taught at the War School, and I understand that he taught tactical things. Tactical things. Much like active writing. Much like how to make a computer work on a day like today. So we're glad that you've got that expertise. We're glad that you uh, have the program up and ready to go. A couple of housekeeping things. One, the bathrooms are back there if you don't know. But more importantly than that, if during the course of the program you have questions, please um, wait until I get the microphone to you to ask your question so that one, it's recorded uh, on the program that we record for future reference, and two, oh, Dick went away, so that Dick can hear what the question is, and he's out in Zoom land. So with that, Rocky, we're delighted to have you here. All right, thank you. Fact or crap, it's on right now. Yeah, well, maybe. Maybe it's on. We'll find out here in a minute. I still have stuff on this screen that, all right. Yay, we are back. So you guys actually pay factor crap or not? No, well, this is what the factor crap cards look like. We, we play it in Kiwanis about once a week. And if you get three answers in a row correct, you get a piece of chocolate. So uh, we've already proven that uh, we can't do that here because we haven't gotten three in a row correct. But uh, what we're gonna do is, uh, we're going to have some fun and do some factor crap things kind of like these, like uh, the first edition of The Joy of Cooking in 1931 included a recipe for how to bake raccoon. Factor crap. Fact. 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 Uh, let's see, what do we got here? There's a species of wasps with scientific names. Here's looking at you and here's to you. Crap. Yeah, so you played this game. Fact. Okay, so. Is that right? Yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah, so that's good stuff, right? So that's what we're going to, some things like that we're going to do. And then in, this is going to be, we're going to do some fun stuff to start. In the middle, we'll get a little more serious. Uh, and we're going to talk about stuff out of this book. And I, you know, I buy like 100 books a week from uh, St. Vinny's because they're like 59 cents. <laughs> And so I have a room full of them. And I uh, bought this one a while back. And the uh, what caught my attention is the uh, quote at the top there is one of the most important books I've ever read, An Indispensable Guide to Thinking Clearly About the World of Bill Gates. Well, if <laughs> Bill Gates says that, I figure that book's probably worth looking at. And that's why I bought the book uh, and read it. And what we're gonna talk about a little bit as we go along, although uh, this is a small part of this book has uh, things that we think are true, things we think we know, things that we see that we think are true. And these are two probably the most common optical illusions that have ever been around. Have you seen these before? These optical, no? One, one the bottom one. The bottom one, some people probably have seen. So those lines are what? Same length, right? Yeah, but they don't look the same length. You know, it doesn't matter how long we stare at them, even though we know they're the same length. And how about those ladies? Which one's taller? Yeah, see, I mean, it looks like one lady's taller and skinnier. I'm worried about which one's thinner. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it does look, but they're exactly the same, but the lines are different. And so, and that affects us uh, every day. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the sources of crap out there? What we're gonna talk about today uh, in several different instances in the presentation are myths. Things that everyone, almost everyone thinks are true because they've kind of come into common knowledge over years and years of repetition. They're not true. Or they are true and we think they're false. And we're gonna look at some instances of that. Often we get those in our childhood and they carry through with us through our whole lives. And then we pass them on as, as like what? How long do you have to wait after you eat before you go swimming? 
Oh, see, look at that. How many right answers did we get? Huh? That's crap. <laughs> Has nothing to do with anything. No, I mean, true. I'm not kidding you. There's all kinds of scientific studies has nothing to do with anything, but we got at least 90% answers here the same when we, when we asked that question, because well, that's what everybody said, and that's what we did uh, growing up. We're fooled by our senses every day, and that's what we were talking about, a little bit about these uh, optical illusions, but that's not only true of what we see. It's true of what we hear, what we feel, what we taste, what we sense. We do not see, hear, feel, or taste reality. Our brain chases everything around, makes a story out of it, and we see what we think we want to see when we do that. So it's uh, a lot of times your vision will override your other senses and fool you. Colors change our taste. Some of you who know me know that I'm kind of a wine geek. I really like wine and I know a lot about it. The interesting thing I came across while doing the original research for this is they took two professional master sommeliers, one from France and one from Spain, and they gave them their favorite group of white wines, three white wines each, and they tasted it, wrote down their impressions, rated it, did the things. Then they went back in the kitchen, they took those same three wines, put red food coloring in, brought those three <laughs> wines back out, they retasted it, totally different impressions, <laughs> totally different tastes, totally different profiles. Same exact wine, red food coloring <laughs> experts at doing that. And that's true for all of us too. They carried that experiment out with lots of other people and it works every time. So that's kind of things that happen. Our brain fills in the blanks when we're running. And so we're seeing something and something moving, it tends to keep moving. If we see something with swirls or things, we think it's moving. So our brain fills that in and makes it move, even though it's not moving. So what we see is often not true. What we feel, what we sense, what we, and then of course, there are, and we had a whole talk about this a while back, intentional fabrications. And we come across those every day. And so, but they're propagated. They keep going, they keep going, they keep going, they keep going, even though they're patently false. Okay, let's see here. And maybe we won't. Let's try this. No, let's try. I don't know what happened here, kid. I am locked up. Let's try. There you go. All right. Here's some other sources, our brain. And this is what we talked about. We're not seeing reality. Our brain's creating a story for us. And most of our time, it does match, but it also unconsciously bends our perception. It fills in the gaps and it uses our past experiences a lot. So what we've been through tends to influence what we see and feel now, even though it's all subconscious. We don't really know what's going on. This is a very uh, uh, appropriate thing. We had to talk a while back uh, about you know, how to tell fact from crap in, in videos and audios and things. And our, every single person has this thing called a dramatic attention filter. Our brain does not want to deal with routine things. It doesn't care. It lets something else, you do it unconsciously. It wants to filter out and it will allow you to pay conscious attention to the most dramatic things that you're confronted with. It prioritizes them, especially if it appears a little dangerous or a little thing. So what you see on the left here is all these ideas and information and inputs coming in and your brain sorts those and it only pays attention to the things that are the most dramatic, the most dangerous. So now what happens, and we talked about this in a previous talk, is the media and especially social media emphasize a clickbait in this dramatic thing to get you to pay attention. That's how they do it. 
They want you to pay attention. Now, what can we do about it? We can apply the crap test to our sources. <laughs> C, currency, how current is it? Is it new information? We're gonna talk about most of us here. Now we're really nice that we have some that are not quite as old as the rest of us. Mm -hmm. We have gaps in our beliefs and knowledge because we learned stuff 40 years ago. That's when we did our big massive learning and things. And we still think that's all true. It's not, it's all changed because of time, but we haven't kept up. We haven't relearned, we haven't restudied. Reliability, that's the CR, the accuracy. Are there statements you know to be false? If they know to be false, then it influences everything else in that source. What do other people say? You know, get their opinions. Whoops, one too many. Authority. What's the, what's the source of the information's practicality? Are they in a position to know? Are they experts on the thing? What are their credentials? Are they really qualified or are they just a zealot giving you their opinion? And then what's the purpose? Are they trying to convince you to buy something, to change your ideas, to vote some way, to be a, a to do something that will influence your religious beliefs? Each one of those has a tendency for them to try to be less than truthful when they do. Okay, this is crap, all right? What's this one on, uh, on the right there that you see? Yeah, it looks pretty three-dimensional, doesn't it? Where do those corners connect? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's really, yeah, when you look, you really start to look at it, it doesn't make any sense. But our brain can't figure that out. You know, it's, it's trying to turn it into something we recognize and know to be real. So, now the one on the left, what's unique about this? All of those lines are straight. All of those horizontal lines are straight. There are no curves, no bumps, no things, no anything. They're all just parallel and the same distance apart. But that's not what we see. Even when we know that, we can't overcome what our brain's doing. So that's what happens to us in, in, uh, in various scenarios. How about these? Anybody ever seen these before? If you look at the reddish ones and you kind of look at them a little bit, they start to move. Hmm. Yeah. That's that, what we talk, your brain filling in the blanks. Now, the one on the right, I really like this one on the right. Have you, anybody seen that one before? <laughs> Are those plates right side up or upside down? Upside down. Oh, no, they're not. Find yeah. one that's the other way. Look at it, and then what happens? They all flip. They all flip. <laughs> as soon as they flip, then you look around again and find one the other way, and they do what? Flip they back. flip back, because your brain wants to be things to be the way you want them to be. Isn't that interesting how you can G. be? <laughs> yeah, it's weird, but that's, that's how your brain will fool you. Huh? What, what's what's interesting is those little the little circles on the left they don't move on the internet oh they don't move coming through no huh. well Must keep be. looking at them well, i am i think it's your i think they are moving <laughs> i'll take a i'll take a video and send it to you Okay, so that'll help. <laughs> that'll help. Then, then we'll have all sorts of sync rates confused. <laughs> all right, let's have some fun. So now that we've learned these things, we're going to look at some common myths or things that are the information that's been around for a long time, or maybe we never even heard of before, but it's really kind of interesting. And then in the middle of this, we're going to learn some things out of that book, Factfulness. Uh, that uh, that I showed you that uh, Bill Gates really likes that talks about the world and everybody took this exam or test when we started and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that 
uh, when we get there. And we're going to, well, let's do that right now before we get going. We're going to do this. I'm sorry, I went off camera there for a minute. I have a test here that I passed out to the individuals that are live and in person here. And uh, I'm just going to go through these, some of these really quick to give you an idea of one. And how many girls finish primary school? What percentage? How many 20s? How many 60s? The answer is 70. 70, because this is old information. This yeah. test was done in 2018. It's actually 69 this year, 69%. Where does the majority of the population live? Low income, middle, or high? Middle. Middle. Right. Middle. In the last 20 years, how many, what's happened to people living? Doubled. Remain the same or halved? Halved. <laughs> halved. <laughs> Now, when you read this book and they talk about it, if you put chimpanzees in a room and give them this test, you know, with A, B, or C, they score 33%. That's what they score. Chimpanzees in a room, they score 33%. Average people in our demographics and things score eight to 10. <laughs> eight to 10. They can't read the, they can't read the question. They get 33. So, and the reason is we've been taught over the years, all these things we haven't kept up. We don't know what's happening. We don't know what's happening in the world or out there. Let's see if there's any others we really what's need. What's the to average life expectancy? What is the average life expectancy in the world out there? 70. 70. 70. Woo-hoo. I got one. Think right. of that. <laughs> now, there are places in the world where it's a lot less than that, but we're talking the average, okay? How many, this is a, one of my favorite ones in here. How many of the world's one-year-old children have been, this is number nine, have been vaccinated against some disease? You know what, the, yeah, you know what the answer is now, right? 80%. Oh, good for 80 you. 80% have been vaccinated against some disease out there. So each one of these you go through there, when you answer it, the answer is just exactly opposite of what you thought. <laughs> that's that's, right. that's the, what we're going to be talking story, about right. here. And that's why we're doing <laughs> going to have some fun doing this. So uh, here we go. We only use 10% of our brains. Fact or crap? Fact. Fact. Fact? Fact. Lucy. Who knows Lucy? Anybody? Yeah, you know Lucy. How'd Lucy do oh, when she used 100% of her brain? <laughs> she was somebody, right? Except that what? <laughs> Here's the truth. Here's a PET scan that shows activity in your brain. At rest, 10%. When you're actually doing something, <laughs> 90 to 100%. 90 to 100% when you're engaged doing an activity, trying to learn, trying to read, 90 to 100% of your brain is engaged. Crap. Crap. <laughs> Here's some uh, other brain myths. <laughs> Damage to your brain is permanent. It cannot heal. Anybody crap. ever hear of that? Not true. That's crap. People are left-brained and right-brained. True. Crap. What? Humans have the biggest brains proportional to body size. Crap. Crap. <laughs> Humans are about 70th percentile as far as brains to body size. About the 70th percentile. New brain cells are formed after no new brain cells. Crap. Oh, really? This is my favorite. That's I am so happy that I finally learned this, <laughs> that excessive alcohol, that's what? Crap. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing to know that you that's not really, <laughs> not really true. Fact or crap? These are the five human senses. Yeah. Fact. Fact. Crap. Oh, see, now I got people on the fence. Now that's what this is all about. <laughs> it's all about getting people on the fence. You don't know if it's fact or crap anymore, right? I think it's fact. It's what? Fact. And what? Crap. 
fact and crap. Really? Crap. Hunger. It is the it is the five, except huh? there's a lot more than five. Did you really? There's a lot more than five. Some people say what? Eight, nine, ten, twenty-three, depending on what how you classify them and what they what you do. How many people can feel heat when you put your hand in the fire? Yeah, that's a sense. Doesn't fit in any one of those. So we know that's the top oh. one then, thermoception. Perception of pain. Pro All of us. Priorception. Okay. Close your eyes. Pro prior. Close your eyes. You too. Touch your nose. Okay. What's that say up there? Close your eyes, touch your nose. Everybody can do it the first time. Everybody. Okay. So you know where your limbs are, where they're at, what's happening. What happens to old people? Why do we fall? Why do we fall? Because we start to lose that sense. We don't know where our foot is. We honestly, that's why we fall. Mm. Because we're walking along. We've been walking along for what, 23, 24 years? And uh, Suddenly, we put our foot up to take that step, which we've done how many times before? All our life, and we go, boom, face down. Because we've that sense oh, is deteriorating steps. now, and we no longer have a good sense of where our feet are. So we fall. Cool. Hmm. Ah, this is one of my favorites. How many people ever watch Saturday Night Live? <laughs> yeah. Saturday Night Live had a sketch years ago about what? Vomitoriums. <laughs> yeah. John Belushi in the vomitorium with a feather. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You know, you're in a Roman orgy, you get in, you go along the thing, you go in the vomitorium, they ralph it out, and you go back and do it some more. Right? <laughs> First showed up when? Roman writer Macrobius's Saturnalia. The modern parody of Saturnalia. Fact or crap? <laughs> I think it's fact. Fact. It is? <laughs> fact. Crap. <laughs> What's a vomitorium? This is also interesting. You're going to learn something now. You don't, you don't come here just to <laughs> giggle. We actually learn stuff. What's a vomitorium? Entrances and exits to, sta to stadiums and theaters in Rome. So what's this? Colosseum. How many vomitoria? Vomitoria, plural, Studio. are there? Hundreds. Hundreds. There you go. That's your vomitory. They're everywhere. It has nothing to do with puking. Oh. I was thinking right. going in the Michigan Stadium. Here's <laughs> one. Here's a good one. I like this one. Black holes are like huge drains and vacuum cleaners. They suck up everything, even light, so they appear black. Fact. Crap. <laughs> Just the facts, ma'am. Who said that? <laughs> Joe Friday. Joe Friday. <laughs> See, I, I put that in small letters there for nobody. who They didn't know who Joe Friday was. But <laughs> Joe Friday said that. <laughs> No one's absolutely sure they exist. We can't see them. Why? It's they're a black, black holes. Can't see them. We do know they're there because of gravity waves. But here's the key thing why it's crap. They're not holes. Oh. There's no hole there. There's this huge, massive thing. It's not necessarily huge. It can be like the size of this room, honestly. It'd be the size of this room and have the mass of 20 of our suns in, the, in something the size of this room. And that's what thing, but it's a big ball. It's not a hole the thing. They're not always black because they suck in other things and it creates fireworks over the top of the hole. So that's another way we know they're there because we see these other stars and things glowing and being, being destroyed. So they're not necessarily black. This one at the bottom, I think, is really kind of cool, though. Spaghetti. Somebody pronounce that for me. Spaghetti. Who said that? All right. I can't say it. I can't say it. What does that mean? 
long and stringy. It means if you try to go through the black hole, through what they call the event horizon, because you go from now to who knows when, you start to turn into spaghetti. And as you go through, you're going to be this long strand of hundreds of things. I think that's what happens if you actually go through the event horizon. So not a good plan. Let me see these. Things. So when you see these wormholes and people going through them and, and stuff like that. So now you know all you didn't want to know about black holes. Here's, here's another one of my personal favorites. Here we go. Chastity belts. <laughs> widely used in the Middle Ages. These are actual, these are in, in uh, museums throughout Europe. There's probably 20 or 30 of them from the Middle Ages. Fact or crap? That is crap. Huh. Historians believe they never really existed, that when they saw them in paintings or writings, they were satire. They didn't actually exist. They were cartoons. But in the 1800s, in Victorian England and France, they started to look at these old paintings and imitate them. So they had brand new things made that they forced in the 1800s but it had nothing to do with chastity. It was role playing. Mm -hmm. It was what they were doing to get their kicks on the thing. Now, however, here's an interesting thing. How many, do you own any, either one of these two things here? No. Uh, Good. Good. These are anti-rape, anti-rape wear, which came out in 2017 on the things and they are the modern version of the chastity belt metal cool. mesh got your own got your own combination lock which you can open and nobody oh can uh, so if you got to pee or something you know i mean you the other one somebody locked it for you this one you lock it yourself so uh yeah i tried to find out how much they cost but i couldn't uh, couldn't really find out how much they cost but i thought that's kind of the modern version there all right, mm. too much fun, right? So now we're going to shift for the for a while, a little while. We're going to do some more serious stuff about what we talked about in this test. Not this. Okay, what we think we know about the world. What's the current state of some of these things? Poverty, wealth, violence, birth, death, all these kinds of things. <laughs> I say this to yes. myself every day. Yeah. I do. Fact. I mean, the world, yeah, I'm, I say that to myself every day. The world's going to hell in the handbasket. This little three question thing here is, is another one of the things that's on that test when you get the real thing. And the answer is what? Here we go. The world's getting better, better and better and better. Okay. Why do we think the world's going to hell in the handbasket? Who said? Yeah, the remember the dramatic information effect. So what shows up in information? Only the worst possible grab your attention news. That's all that makes it. The fact that young girls are now in 80 to 85 percent graduating from primary, that doesn't get reported. How exciting. Who would listen to that? And do that. So all sensationalism. It's all sensational. It but what's it do? Gets our attention. Changes our minds because that's what we now believe is true. Mm -hmm. We believe all that is true because that's the only information we have. We keep sucking it in and uh, do that. So let's check and see some individual things. Here we go. Infant mortality rates are staggering, right? And they're driven in the, by the developing world where there's large numbers of births per family and a corresponding, therefore, high mortality rate. Crap. Fact or crap? Crap. Crap. Yeah, you guys are on to me now. Though. <laughs> You're on to me now. Why? Oh! 
<laughs> See now, that's what happens when you know the current information and we don't because we've been out of the loop for so long. We don't okay, know those kinds right of, that's exactly, exactly time. right. Okay, so here's the deal. Here's the UN information. Developed, what? 100% survivability rate, maybe 95. Developing, what's it going? Okay, except what? You know, I'd never give you a straight answer, right? That's a, whoops. That was 1965. Mm. That first slide was from 1965, which is what, what? We know, that's what we know. Mm. 2018, there's the new thing, what happened? Those big dots here, excuse me, this dot and this dot, what's that? Who are those, what countries are those? India and China, okay? The, the dot size is the size of the population of the country. India and China, so what happened to India and China? Exploded. They won what? Became developed over that 40 years, and two, their birth rates dropped even lower than the US. So we have this kind of misview of what's happening out there. Factor crap. Oh man, you know this one, right? We talked about that. Here's the actual data. Now you do see that there are some places where it's still very low, Sub-Saharan Africa, but the population's low except for Nigeria. And then you can see on the, again, the bubbles on the blue chart there, the bigger the bubble, the bigger the population. And you can see what a factor Nigeria is in the, in the numbers game. We have a tendency, we who, and, and so do other people, but we have a tendency to drive all groups into two groups. Remember when we talked about this before and another thing, us and what? Them. Them. We tend to divide groups in our head every time into us and them. And it's not possible that them or they are equivalent to us. That's not possible <laughs> in our head. That's why we can't see China, India, and Niger things being one developed and two having a birth rate less than us. We can't imagine that. It doesn't fit our, our worldview. So as we get older, there's a gap. It's called the gap instinct between what we learned and how things have changed and we don't get it as older people. This is an interesting one. Many have heard something like this, world population, and it'll be unsustainable by 2100. Yes, no, maybe. Yes. Oh, oh, that's she's, she's, that, she's on to me now. See, we got it. Is it true or false? Fact or crap? Crap. But it seems like fact. Everything we read, everything we hear, what we hear, everything we ever, ever hear says, says that that's true. Okay. Look at this. That's population 10,000 BC to now. Look at what happens to the line up until what? The 1500s, it was essentially what? Zero. In other words, very small numbers around the world until what happened? Somewhat modern medicine, understanding about germs, mm -hmm. understanding about cleanliness, understanding about water, understanding about needing clean water. Once we learned that in the 1500s, then what happened? population went through the roof. Infant mortality went down. And look at, the, look at that curve, okay? But this is what they show us, and this is what they say. So we see this curve that's going like this, all right? And it's gonna go, go and go and go. Well, that's the part that's not true because this is called a straight line instinct. Now, here's, a, here's what's actually happening out there. 
between 2017 and things. And you see there the kind of pinkish purple one, that's Nigeria, which is kind of moving on up. And China's moving way down. Why is Nigeria moving on up? Because they're still in the scenario of high birth rate and, uh, and poor uh, medical care on the things. And so they're, they're, they're starting now to not have the, the infant mortality, ah. but they haven't reduced the birth rate. Okay. You see what I mean? Because it's still a tradition. They mm -hmm. still are popping these kids out five, six, seven to a family. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they're not dying like the kids, like they used to. And this is, this is what I was talking about. This is a straight line uh, instinct that we talk about. And of course that blue dotted line is if things just keep on going, but that's not anybody. If you read anybody who studies this projection, they all project that that's gonna curve off like the solid blue line. And that's because of all the things we've been talking about here, better education, lower birth rates, lower rate. everything is tamping that down, everything that's happening. But we don't get that view. Negativity instinct, we think everything is bad. It's going to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> There's 16 bad things that are actually getting better. And then there's good things that are getting better. But we don't see those and we don't hear about them because they're not dramatic. They don't catch our attention. This is from that book, Factfulness. Uh, and he lists these 10 things that can help us get a more clear view of what's really happening in the world. We notice that when you live through something, the changes happen so slowly, you don't notice them. It's like the boiling the frog, right? You throw the fog in the cold water, turn on the heat. They don't get it until they're dead because they just, it's so slow uh, coming upon us. We don't notice slow changes. We need to use multiple tools and we need to question ourselves. And we need to take small steps and not leap onto the ideas and do that. It's a great book, by the way. So a lot more information in there. But that's about, that's about as much seriousness as I can ever stand at one time. So <laughs> we're going to go back and do a few more fun things before we stop. Okay. Anybody have Silly Putty when they were younger? You don't even know what Silly Putty is, do you? You do? Even better. You ever have it? Oh, so you know the answer to this then, right? You drop it from the top of your house, what happens? Factor mm, crap. Does it bounce? Uh, Philip, so yeah. Weird. Silly putty is what's called a non Newtonian liquid. In other words, it doesn't behave like normal physical things do. It's weird. It does weird things. Now, you probably need to be higher than three stories, but say you go eight stories up in an apartment building or five stories up, that's probably high enough. If you drop it, it's gonna shatter like glass when it hits the kind of, and then what? And then turn right back into soft things. So in the instant that it hits, it's gonna shatter. As soon as that event's over, that impact, what happens? Back to silly putty. So now you got all these gooey, blurry blobbles things there laying around. But in that instant, it blew up on the thing. So it actually shatters like glass in the instance, like this guy hitting the silly putty with the that it just shatters fact, fact or crap fact in the pads in the oh pool. see we got a guy trying to game the system over here the answer <laughs> is what in the pads in the both <clears throat> 
fact, and crap. Or pad their feet. Oh. They do cool themselves by panting, but it's not like sweating. They sweat like we do. Where? Pads of their feet. Out of their paws. Yeah, out of the pads of their feet. They have sweat glands exactly like ours. On the thing. Interesting stuff. Whoop. You didn't know that? I didn't either. See, that's why I do all this stuff. Here's a good one. Who's ever gone swimming in a in a coral reef area? These little babies hang out there. Manta shrimp has the strongest punch of any animal in the world, practically. Must be crap. Must be crap, huh? Fact. Oh. Move so fast you can't even see. You cannot it. see it. It's so fast you cannot see it. He can t stand next to a snail shell, which is you ever try to break a snail shell? Bam! Shut it. Break that snail shell. They actually break fingers. If you reach down and do that, and they hit you, they've broken fingers doing that. I saw one mm -hmm. picture which I didn't want to show you of a fisherman on a boat, got one in, came in with his fish, landed on his foot. He had heavy rubber fishing boots on, hit him in the foot, poked a hole through the boot, through his sock, and halfway through his foot. Blood was just pouring out through the boot. With the, body, with the claw, just like, a, just like a hammer, just boom, with a claw. Yeah, no, with a hammer, with a claw. Anybody ever heard of leprosy? Yeah, remember every every old Christian movie that ever was, they always have the leper colony, right? <laughs> One of the old movies always have the leper colony, and they're always what? The biggest outcasts in the world and, yep. and always isolated out. And this is in the Middle Ages, same way. They were brutal against leprosy in the Middle Ages. Fact or crap? Fact. Crap. It's not highly contagious. You almost cannot catch it from another human being. But the stigma it, attached to it and it, the isolation. It attaches to things and then it gets <laughs> in you. And it can be five years before you show a symptom. Up to five years before you show a symptom <clears throat> once you're infected. It's very, very, very slow developing and slow acting. It's still common throughout the world. Not, you know, one thing they tell you not to do in that faculty in this book is, do, is talk about developing and non-developing, but that's our lexicon, so we'll use that. In the developing world, it's still very common. In the US, 150 cases a year. That's still a lot of cases. Still a lot of cases. Is it incurable once you get it? Do your fingers fall off? Do, does any of that happen? Not in modern times, but because if, of if we back up to this guy here, there are individual anecdotal examples of people that look pretty bad and have had those kinds of things happen to them. But this guy's 68 years old. He already lived longer than he ever should. He's got leprosy, totally untreated forever. So what happens now? It's very treatable with modern antibiotics. I mean, curable, not just treatable. You, you get the antibiotics, it's gone. You're not just treating the symptoms and doing mm -hmm. that. So, so the answer, that's why it's mostly crap because it's not contagious, it's not deadly, and your finger's not gonna fall off if you get it. Okay, a couple more of these, we're almost done. Anybody seen this one before? Now, you know, I'm telling you, you know that A and B are the same color. Hmm. 
You know that, right? I mean, I'm telling you that. That's not in the normal way they say, but I'm telling you that A and B are the same color. Yeah. Way. <laughs> Crap. If you add gray bars, the same color as A, to the picture, what happens? We still, we still want B to be lighter, no matter what. We still have trouble. It kind of, B tends to flicker even a little for us because the uh, impact of those other squares is still so strong on us that we want B to be lighter even when we put exactly the color over the top of it on the thing. That's how we get fooled easily. Okay, one final thing. No, I think I have one more after this, but how big is a 14 inch pizza? Would you rather have two 10 inch pizzas? This is the price is right. Door number two. <laughs> okay, would <clears throat> yeah, diameter. That's what. Pizza Hut, Little Caesars, and Domino's, their large pizzas are 14 inch diameter. 14, that's their large. Their mediums are 10 inch. So you want two mediums or one large? Two mediums. Two mediums, they say. No, it's Dang. crap, okay? Now, this is a little bit hard because I could not find a reference to a 14 inch pizza. Everything in this slide is referenced to the 18 inch pizza, okay, which is extra large. And some of these places, you know, Pizza Hut knows have them, they do it, but it gives you an idea that, you know, okay, for the 18 inch, you need two and a quarter, 12 inch, two and a quarter, 12 inch. You need five, eight inch. You need three and a quarter, 10 inch to equivalent to the, to the 18 inch. And then the key thing is, of course, it's like pricing in the store. A lot of stores you go in and they got the little tag there under there. It tells you how much it is per ounce or things or something. That's the price per ounce for Pizza Hut. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, well, they do. You know, and so, but I thought it was really kind of cool that you can go in and because everybody I know, including me, would say, I'll take two. I would much rather have two. You know, I'm going to get more. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it. <laughs> okay, one more, and then we're almost done here. Th I like this one too. Anybody seen this one before? No, this is really a good one. This shows you how screwed up our brains are. <laughs> What color are these spheres? Green. Oh, stop. Yeah, the, the spheres are cream. Yeah. The lines through them. Yeah, they all look cream to you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, the red, don't look the cream red to me. line ones make so it look looks like one is red and one is orange, brown, and one's lighter colored. That's crap. Huh? Yeah, they're all exactly the same color. Cream. They're all exactly the same color. It's yeah. a color over the top makes us think that that the whole thing is a different color. So every one of those spheres is the same color. That's how easy we are fooled. There's the there's the guy that did this particular. It even gives you the red, UG, green, blue, something. There. Light brown. Okay. So <laughs> that's pretty much what, I've, uh, what I have for you today on what we think we know uh, on the thing. But I had a really fun time uh, figuring some of this stuff out. And this book, Factfulness, I would recommend to anybody that wants to. It, it was written in 2018, so already it's out of date. But uh, it really gives you an idea, more, much more factual idea of what's going on, on in the world, not filtered by some uh, exaggeration. Bill Gates, yeah.
No, he's the guy that just said it's a great book. He likes the, the guy that the author is uh, Hans Rosling. He's a very wealthy guy now. He gives seminars all over the world, like when they have the economic retreat in Davos. Anybody seen that on the thing? Davos, Switzerland, when they have all the financiers of all over the world go there. Mm -hmm. He's one of the guys that goes and speaks about what's really happening in the world and talks to them and, and gives them the data on what's really happening. And now he, he, uh, they, he his daughter and his son-in-law have a company they call Gap Finder. And they do all this research and things. And then they put out these charts, the bubble charts and the things. That's what they do. They put those out for people to use and to learn. Uh, in the things. And so that's one of the ways they make money is that they have this organization called Gap Finder and uh, hmm. trying to find out what's really going on in the world. So, Whoop, questions? All right. Questions for Rocky? If not, thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for another delightful program. I didn't think it was crap, I thought it was all fast. <laughs> <laughs>